Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing China petroleum and chemical stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. China Petroleum and Chemical is also known as Sinopec. It is the world's largest oil refining, gas, and petrochemical company. The business includes oil and gas exploration, refining and marketing, production and sales of petrochemicals, storage and pipeline transportation of crude oil and natural gas, importing and exporting of crude oil, natural gas, refined oil, petrochemicals, and other chemicals. It also produces ethanol and several biofuels such as biodiesel and green jet fuel from waste vegetable oil. The company plans to buy oil from Russia even during the Ukraine invasion. Sinopec is involved in two major projects in Russia and they own 10% of Sibor. Sibor is the largest petrochemical company in Russia. Sinopec is headquartered in Beijing, China and was founded in 2000. The ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, Mexican Bolsa, London Stock Exchange, Buenos Aires, Hong Kong and Shanghai Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 78 billion market cap. They're trading at $51 a share and they have 1.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They had lots of free cash flow in 2018, $13 billion. That dropped a lot in 2019. It came up in 2020. Then it's back up to where it was in 2018 at close to $13 billion. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that peaks in 2021 at 14 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company and they have a ton of revenue, almost half a trillion dollars in 2019. It was 439 billion in 2021. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in Chinese Ren. I converted these numbers to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet. The top line is the revenue of the sales, that was 2.7 trillion. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are all the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that peaked in 2021 at 548 billion. Even with lower revenue compared to 2019 and 2018, they had higher gross profit. They had really solid margins in 2021. Below that is their operating expenses. Gross profit minus operating expenses gives you your operating income. And that grew a ton from 25 billion to 124 billion. They received 5.7 billion of interest on their investments and paid about 14 billion of interest on their debt. Then you have other income and expenses. These are all the gains or losses not part of the company's core operations. An example of something in this category is an asset impairment. Then you have your pre-tax income, then your taxes, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was highest in 2021 at 86 billion. The company has not posted onto its website their 2021 financials, so I'm just gonna use what's in Yahoo Finance. This is their statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. That was highest in 2021 at 225 billion. An easy way to convert to US dollars is to divide by seven. So that's a little over 30 billion US dollars in 2021. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They spent a lot in CapEx in 2021. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have tons of free cash flow left over each year, over 10 billion US dollars in 2021. So they do pay a really nice dividend. And each year they add a similar amount of debt as they pay down. Let's look at the capital structure. 124 billion of equity, 50 billion of debt. They're 71% equity, 29% debt. If they used all the cash on their balance sheet to pay down debt, they would only have 14 billion of debt left over. This blue line is their equity balance since 2015. You can see how high their equity balance is compared to their debt balance, which is the red line. I gave them the whack on Simply Wall Street, 10.09%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 139 billion. 
we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, we get a value of the company of $128 billion. We divide that by 1.5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $83. They're trading at $51. So they're trading at a 39% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Their projected revenue for 2024 is 3 trillion ren, which is 479 billion US dollars. And to get their 2022 and 2023 revenue, I use this chart as well. And since their revenue is slowly declining, their 2025 revenue is slightly lower than 2024. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. And they convert 2% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 2%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street values the company at 120. They're saying it's 58% undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. It was over $100 in the beginning of 2018. Then it dropped a lot in 2020, like every other stock did. The price of oil has come up a ton since this point, but their stock price has not increased nearly as much. The main reason is because this company is in China. But I only think it's a matter of time until the stock price gets up to where it should be. I think the stock price should be close to $150, but I know it won't hit that point because they're in China. But I think 51 is way too low. It should be closer to $80. In the past five years, the S&P 500 is up 91% while this stock is down 37%. Their bait is close to one, so the stock moves with the market. It's gone down 6.5% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P is up 6.5%. The 52 week low is 41, the high is 56 and the stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About 150,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. 3% are held by institutions and hardly any of the shares are shorted. They pay a semi-annual dividend, $1.98 in June, $2.47 in September. So that's close to a 10% dividend yield, which they can afford. It's 59% of their free cash flow, 55% of their net income. Their next dividend will be paid on June 30th. So if you want this dividend, you have to buy the stock before June 8th. This is the company's dividend yield since 2012. And it looks like the yield is at its highest point ever. And the forecast is for the yield to stay in the double digits, 11.7% by 2024. They've only done one stock split, a 13 for 10 stock split in 2013. It looks like their employee count has been going down the past few years, but they do employ a lot of people, 386,000. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $11,300 today. That's a 13% total return. Private companies own 69% of the stock, the general public 17%, institutions 14% and a small amount by the government and individual insiders. The government of China owns 69% of the company, then GIC 2%, China Securities Finance 2%, BlackRock and Vanguard. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have an amazing PE below six, that's stock price over earnings per share. And their price of sales is 0.2, which is stock price over sales per share. That means investors are paying 20 cents for $1 revenue and a price to book of 0.6. That's stock price over book value per share. So in liquidation, the company's worth $80 a share and their price to free cash flow is also really good at 6.1. That's stock price over free cash flow per share. Their return on invested capital is 11.5%. They can cover the interest payments with their operating income 22 times. Their ROE is 11%, that's net income over equity. Their current ratio is 0.9, that's current assets over current liabilities. And their quick ratio is 0.5. In 2021, they generated almost 13 billion of free cash flow. They have negative 13 billion of working capital and they pay out 7.6 billion of dividend payments. So they're gonna be short $8.1 billion. I wouldn't be too concerned because they have lots of cash flow coming in. Plus, it's pretty easy for them to take on debt if they needed it. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. There are 20 companies in the same industry as China Petroleum. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. They invest more in CapEx than any other company. They have a good debt to equity ratio. They pay a massive dividend. They rank ninth in market cap. The average is 88 billion, they're 78 billion. And they have amazing price multiples. 
because the stock price is still trading at a really low point even though their revenue and profits are so much higher than 2020. Their three-year revenue growth rate is negative 2%. Their ROA is a little better than average and their ROE is better than average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 39% discount. This stock could definitely double or triple, but the concern is people don't like investing in Chinese companies anymore. So the stock price is artificially low, but if investor sentiment changes, then the stock price will start going way up. But who knows if investor sentiment will ever change. I rank their free cash flows 8 out of 10, their revenue 7 out of 10, and their ratios 10 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.